Okay, we are going to shift a little bit of gears here. Um, all these wonderful therapies are, are going to need a lot of uh, materials. And we know that for the longest time, uh, research use only materials have been uh, in the market for this type of research. But now that most of these therapies are reaching market, we are having a hard time to understand how can we use the same materials to manufacture them. The truth is a new category of companies are coming along and one of them is ours. Um, we've been uh, working heavily with many cell therapy, tissue engineering, and gene therapy companies, some of them commercial today, to bring some of these products to market, understanding that the final product, mainly on the cell therapy side and tissue engineering th side, cannot be sterilized. So when the product cannot be sterilized, everything that you put inside that process has to be either pharmaceutical grade or at least sterile so it doesn't bring anything new to the um, environment of the cells in the processing, which sometimes can take several days. It's just not a few days, but maybe longer than a week or so. So our company's been focusing pretty much in filling that gap of the opportunities on GMP manufacturing of ancillary materials and creating products that are safe at scale with the quality that is needed to make all these therapies a reality. We are privately held, so it's actually different from what is, you've seen uh, perhaps so far here. Uh, we were founded in 2006 and rapidly grown to be uh, one of the leaders in the regenerative medicine market. We have two manufacturing sites. One is in uh, Bockerton, Florida, uh, which is ISO 13485 medical device with several clean rooms, ISO 7, ISO 5, to fulfill cryopreservations and other components that we uh, manufacture here in the US. And a site in Buenos Aires, Argentina, that manufactures many of the pharmaceutical products that we offer today and you will see some of them. We offer also modifications of these molecules and we have a portfolio of IP that is related to new uh, recombinant proteins that sometimes are fusion proteins and others and we can uh, discuss uh, later on some of those. Uh, some engineering tissue products and some non-DMSO cryopreservation options to uh, deliver at the bedside uh, safely these um, new technologies and products as we say. I will just briefly go quickly over each one of those. I know that coffee is waiting out there and it's siesta time in Barcelona, so actually I'm going to try to synthesize everything that we do in these three categories, cryopreservation media, recombinant proteins, and some media supplements, and give you a flavor of what we do in terms of bringing some safety and scale to the market. So in the recombinant uh, protein side, we are quite experienced. Our site in Buenos Aires has been producing recombinant since 1989. The first biosimilar that we manufactured was interferon alpha 2b. <coughs> and we have a broad portfolio of cytokines interleukin 2 as Aldis leukine uh, is being manufactured since 1996 and other cytokines as well. In 2011, we actually augmented that portfolio with more GMP cytokines, pharma grade, as IL-15, 7, and 21 for the immuno uh, portfolio. But we also have others that are already in the market uh, serving the ex vivo uh, companies like EPO, GCSF, and SCF and others. We have a cell therapy unit in Latin America able to fulfill preclinical work if needed and some manufacturing of uh, plasmid as a GMP plasmid site as well. We have our own uh, patented oligo uh, B rec treatment technology that we are trying to actually right now spin off and uh, patented monoclonal antibody until the EGF and others um, molecules in our portfolio if you are interested to learn more. In terms of the cytokines, we actually innovate in, in a way that many were looking for. Uh, we saw the manufacturing process and we decided that IL-2 perhaps was better suited to be in a liquid formulation. So we have our first Aldis looking in a actually lower lock syringe that can be used in the processing of CAR-T and NK seamlessly and uh, is a stable at 228 for two years 
and uh, the formulation is quite strong. We have a CTD, ECTD filing drug substance on IL-2, and IL-7, 15, and 21 are coming up. Uh, we on, not only produce a sterile filter product, but we have large capacity for sterile lyophilization, which bring a sterile product to the processing stage. And we have large scale capacity, gram capacity to fulfill the needs and the risk of this type of products. So we ensure the security of supply, which is critical in these manufacturing times. Uh, just briefly, overview of data. I know that you were being overwhelmed with data in the last uh, hour, but basically to understand that our aldus looking is actually behaving similarly and sometimes even better than the pro looking in the market. And that comparison study has been done by our colleagues at Dana Farber um, about a few months ago. Uh, so pretty much they were the same way uh, as uh, the eldest looking of Akron and the pro looking from Clinigen. And that gave us the opportunity to open Amsite Pharma, which is a subsidiary of Akron right now. Uh, we have animal studies that are uh, coming up soon for toxicity and understanding where uh, not only IL-2, but other adjuvants and immunomodulators can fall into place. Uh, we actually leverage strong clinical partnerships that we have up to date, academic and industry collaborations, and more than 30 years of biologics manufacturing and our underneath uh, our belt, and the know-how to develop novel molecules, novel proteins, and base therapeutics. We will register, actually, in the next uh, coming uh, years, actually, native modify and fusion proteins of our portfolio for systemic or localized delivery in a range of indications, including cell therapy adjuvants. In terms of cryopreservation media, we have a nice portfolio of patent-pending non-DMSO options. Some of them are already going into uh, animal studies. They are going right now and being evaluated in MSCs, immune cells, and multicellular types. We understand the delivery at the bedside without further manipulation is critical. And because of that, we decided to enhance our portfolio in the non-DMSO, giving the chance of one less step uh, for these cell therapies to arrive safe to our patients. Uh, we also have some uh, DMF ongoing and, pre and preparations for Q3, and currently a multi-institute um, under NIH has been testing this product for different cell types, and we'll see the results in the next coming months. In terms of meat protein and media supplements, I just want to give you a note that HSA is a common denominator in many and many uh, therapies for different uses, either cell culture or excipients. What we did is just a slight modification. We manufactured albumin as an injectable product, but in this particular case, we use for ex vivo use, and we actually do not add any caprylate, tryptophan, or other aggregates that usually are in the injectable products to sustain stability because they may affect the cells and different cell types. And last but not least, the viral inactivated fibronectin. We realize that fibronectin is quite a nice glue for the cells in different surfaces, but there is a lot of risk involved in the viral content that may come from the human plasma that where it's actually extracted. So the viral inactivated option is a, a, a safe uh, opportunity for our customers to use it in a different settings where this product is needed. Actually, um, what we realized, and this is one of the products that recombinants could be more expensive, and then eventually giving a layer of safety on our product that could be sourced easily. It's a good opportunity for us and for our customers to reduce the cost of goods, which is our main objective as a company. And last but not least, uh, having all this capacity, we offer the services for our customers to understand that we can actually create new molecules un under microbial fermentation or mammalian fermentation, and we have large capacity for that. Uh, and the most important thing is that we have the sterile lyophilization in large quantities in-house, and that brings a lot of safety to the um, supply chain. All final products are processed in, with the CGMP requirements and guarantee the quality and the purity and the consistency, and that is critical in this particular space. 
I just want to mention that, again, these type of companies are not very common in this space, but they are going to become more and more important because these products, they are going to be manufactured in uh, different facilities, decentralized, uh, will require control on the supply chain. And the only control that supply chain can give it to you is the sterility and the consistency of the supply. And it's quite important as you put all these therapies into the market globally. And here, that's where exist and that's where we are here. Uh, these are our contract, commercial contract manufacturing capacities. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be outside at the end. Thank you very much.